And this relates to our talk about the construct, the self-concept, mm -hmm. that everything that's identified with externally is part of that construct, personhood, world, country, you know, sexuality, male, female, and, and skills, attributes, on and on and on. And this is saying even my idea of God is just part of a construct. Yes, the, the deceived mind has a projected God. You know, it can be a God of the Old Testament, for instance, where anthropomorphic, given human qualities of being angry at times, being punitive at times, being loving at other times. This is a projected God. A God of, of the future, even. God will come and someday will save mankind, you know. It's, it's like a hologram. It's like the mind has, has a hologram of time and space around it to protect it from love. And it has to give up the, the investment and the belief in the hologram before it can spring into the awareness. So it has to give up even its belief in God. Yes, belief in a projected God, mm -hmm. yes. And, that, and that's, I mean, that is the belief that the mind holds. A yes. belief in a projected God. Yes. So part of the undoing and unlearning is giving up belief in God as the deceived mind holds it. Yes, this can uh, sound on the surface like we're getting into blasphemy. Well, what? Are you telling me give up my belief in God? Or uh, stop believing in God? Uh, a passage will quickly jump to page 350 in the uh, workbook and read the first sentence which says, simply do this, be still and lay aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is. There it is. Mm. Very clearly stated in the Course of Miracles of giving up all, laying aside all thoughts of what you are and what God is. And this section about emptying your mind of everything it thinks is either true or false or good or bad, of every thought it judges worthy, and of all ideas of which it is ashamed. Hold on to nothing. This relates to our passage that we're reading on everything you recognize you identify with externals, something outside itself. There is nothing outside the, the Son of God. There is nothing else that God and creation and the sun's creations, in, an, in a sense of abstract light and, and infinity, are truth or are have existence, and nothing else does. So this kind of rules out the cosmos. <laughs> the body cannot know, and while you limit your awareness to its tiny senses, you will not see the grandeur that surrounds you. God cannot come into a body, nor can you join him there. So this rules out the immortality of the body as an idea. Limits on love will always seem to shut him out and keep you apart from him. The body is a tiny fence around a little part of a glorious and complete idea. It draws a circle, infinitely small, around a very little segment of heaven, splintered from the whole, proclaiming that within it is your kingdom, where God cannot enter. And then, as we close this reading from the Course, we can jump to the next page, page 365. Do not accept this little fenced-off aspect as yourself. And the beginning of the next paragraph, love knows no bodies and reaches to everything created like itself. Its total lack of limit is its meaning. So this really paints a picture for us of the abstractness of the infinite nature of, of love and of God. And really lays it out that there is no reconciliation between the body and the world and God.
that God did not create the body, God did not create the world, that these are temporal, fleeting, changing, and in a sense, in the ultimate sense, therefore have no existence, because what God created is eternal and changeless, limitless. And only what God created exists. Yes. So you made some reference to the creation of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about my creations. It okay. comes up repeatedly in the course, and I notice it's always seemed pretty vague to me. Um, and I guess it would, because the creations are abstract. Yes. And the creations are not known to the deceived mind. It's only when the deceived mind um, is no longer deceived that the creations will be recognized, will be experienced. Yeah, an awake mind would, that knows what creation is and knows what creativity is, is, is aware of that which has come from its extension. And that creativity has nothing to do with what might be thought of as creativity in terms of very, you know, a very creative, artistic, imaginative mm. mind that expresses itself. Creativity has absolutely nothing to do with imagination. In a sense, uh, one could even say that The Course in Miracles is a very creative expression. You know, pages and pages and pages of iambic pentameter, Shakespearean blank verse, very poetic verses and so forth. And, you know, in the sense of, of um, something being very expressive of something much higher, um, this is often the sense of creativity in this world. Creation and true creativity have nothing at all to do with this world. They have nothing at all to do with the symbols and the forms and images of the world. That's imagination. Creation is, an ex is involves extension, which is another word, which um, it's in a sense spirit begetting spirit. Um, it's uh, there is increase involved, but it's not a quantifiable increase. It's not like you know you have in this world one, two, three, four, and more is is in a quantifiable sense. But the, we read about increase, um, the kingdom of heaven. And God and His creations are always increasing. So, do you have a sense of what that means? If it doesn't mean quantifiable, like what is that? Well, once again, this is um, expansive. You could talk about expansive, and yet without in a size orientation. I mean, how it's difficult to conceptualize um, that. But but that's precisely the point. Is that that when we speak in words of, of con concepts and try to convey it, revelation is, is not transferable in terms of words. Revelation is an experience. It's beyond concept. Yes. Creation, creativity in the sense we're speaking of, is, is, is able to be experienced, but it, it is not transferable in the conceptual sense. It can't be transferred through words. But it, it's a highly um, personal experience, as the Course tells us in the early part of the text. So to even attempt to explain these things um, is, in a sense, missing the mark. To explain the creations? Yes, to explain the creations. We, it is been, we have been told that uh, Jesus kind of takes a, a theoretical um, stab at it, you know, in the sense of explaining it in the, the text of um, them being extensions. He, we can talk about cause and effect, of God being the cause, and the crea God's creation, Christ, being an effect, His effect. And in this sense, this would be like a, a metaphor of, or a repetition of, of that, in the sense that the Son has creative ability. And the Son is a co-creator, in that sense, with having the power of God and, and having the ability to extend that. That's what creation is, to, to extend, to increase. So the creations are the effect of the Son of God. 
what comes through to me when I read in various places in the Course about my creations is that um, there's much joy associated with my creations, even though at this, you know, it seems at this point I'm not recognizing what those creations are and I can't talk about them. Um, yes. But they, they do exist and there's much joy associated with my creations. Yes. In, in a sense, the creations exist in the ultimate sense and the veil for within the framework of the dream, the veil is drawn between the the creations, my creations, and my awareness of my creations. In a sense, when the veil is lifted, there is a full um, awareness. Or it's just a state of, of being, one with my creations. Do you think there are things in the world that are, that in some way reflect my creations? Well, the things in the world are part of the veil that literally block the awareness of the creations. In other words, um, you know, you can s the, the deceived mind projects out um, separate things that are, are that are seen as separate and apart from the fabric: trees, caterpillars, birds, butterflies, butterflies, bears, rainbows, bodies, uh, th and these. This is the veil that's being seen. This is perception. Um, the creations are, are part of an experience of, uh, of a union that literally, um, when the veil is lifted, um, are experienced. And in that sense, um, there are no things in this world that, that um, are reflections, but there is a way of looking upon the world okay. that is a refre reflection. If we said that there were specifics, like butterflies are reflections of my creations or of, of God or heaven, we get back, you know, into some of the, you know, uh, seeing God in specifics in the world, which God knows not form. Mm -hmm. There's two lessons in the Course. Um, God is in everything I see, followed by God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. And in this sense, we're, we're talking about a way of looking, or a vision of, of the Holy Spirit not ordering the world into a hierarchy of illusions, but, but with that vision, seeing the false as false, um, seeing instead of s separate um, objects, but just a, literally a mosaic or a blanket of forgiveness covering all of the seeming perceived separate um, objects in the world. Or to get to our discussion of the ending of the duality of subject and object, that literally from that state of, um, of unity, which the Holy Spirit is, or true perception, then the, uh, in a sense, there's the reflection. That is a reflection of of love. Still involves perception, mm -hmm. so it's not love mm -hmm. itself, but it's the reflection or a new purpose given to the projected world. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an experience of that unity and yeah. that oneness can be said to be a reflection. Yes. Just as the, the unity or oneness that, that in a sense comes through in the holy relationship can be said to be a reflection of the oneness, the only oneness that there is. Yes. The whole relationship in this world is a, is a learning accomplishment, and it's, um, it's literally uh, unlearning the false ideas and beliefs and learning true perception. And in that sense, it's a reflection of unity, it's a reflection of oneness, but in the ultimate sense, union or oneness is, is abstract, is knowledge or heaven. So anytime we, we speak of the perceptual realm, we can speak of the reflection of love or the reflection of We're always pain. somewhat removed from the whole realm of revelation when we're talking about anything that has a perceptual component in it, is what you're saying. Yeah. 
knowledge. I mean, 